Hello and welcome to another video on my YouTube channel. My name is Joris and today I'm going to talk again about European ETFs that invest their money into the USA. And in this second part, I'm going to talk about ETFs that distribute quality dividends. So dividends that come from quality companies that claim to be quality or are aristocrats. So. I already went over this in the first video but I am always going to repeat it a bit so I'm going to talk about 19 European ETFs that invest into the USA and pay a dividend so paying a dividend is crucial so the accumulating ETFs I'm not talking about those in uh, in these videos and not on my channel as well because my channel is about dividend investing and in the first part I talked about five ETFs that invest their money into the S&P 500 and in this second part I'm going to talk about six ETFs that uh, claim to distribute quality dividends from quality stocks or dividend aristocrats and this the third part, so the next part, is going to go about three ETFs that invest into the Nasdaq 100 and one ETF that invests according to the Islamic rules. And then we have the final part and that is going to go about four ETFs that pay out higher dividends. And yeah, those two, you already guessed it, it's going to be about XYLF and QYLD as well. So I already mentioned XYLF in the previous one and there it didn't score that well uh, as the other four ETFs but it's an income ETF so it's not really comparable if you're young try to avoid it if you're a little bit older or in between like me then XYLF isn't wrong but uh, yeah you need to know those things before you decide how you're going to invest your money make a schedule make a, a an investment scheme and stick to it that's really important and then of course the the general things that you should know when I go into the slides of, of the ETFs that I'm going to discuss you can pause the video and read them but uh, I'm going to go to the first ETF of today so it's the DGRW a famous one for a lot of uh, investors that want uh, good dividend growth and yeah this one it's in the name Wisdom Tree US Quality Dividend Growth use its ETF so it's about quality and dividend growth a lot of people like that me Personally, I like quality dividends, but not the focus on stocks that grow their dividend per se. And one of the next videos, I'm going to explain that further. But for me, they perform really good, especially in the past five years, because there, there were a lot of downs in the market. So then there are always stocks that... Uh, between parentheses grow their dividend again but actually the the stocks went down quite fast and they also dropped their dividends and then they started again growing it so it's not the stocks that I like to own myself and when I see them pop up in uh, ETFs like these then I tend to shy away from them although they perform really well especially the last five years so with that being said the total expense ratio for this ETF is 0.33 percent it's uh, noted in US dollar 36.80 is momentarily the the price on the six stock exchange it pays out in US dollar as well there are 300 holdings in this ETF and there is in Europe only 76 million invested into this ETF which is I think 
actually strange because it's a really good ETF. Although I'm not the one that is going to invest in it, I still need to say that it's a really good ETF. It's a sampling ETF, so one of the two of the nine, uh, so one of the two that are sampling ETFs from the 19. So we have two sampling ones and 17 fully replicated ones. So this one is the first sampling one. And the past year, it is up 17.50%. And the past five years, almost up 80%. And as you know from the previous video, the S&P 500 was up uh, 86%. So it's not lagging behind that much, although it focuses on uh, dividends. It pays out four dividends per year and in interesting months as well. So in January, April, July and October, you don't find that many ETFs that pay out in, in those months. So in that regard, it's also an interesting ETF. The dividend yield is 1.30%. Uh, and compared to the S&P 500 there, it was 1.17% more or less. And once again, yeah, I'm, I'm always jealous as a European to see uh, that even distributions on USA stocks, ETFs. So what more can I say that then it's beautiful how, how they, they do it there. So we can go to the next one and that's FUSD and personally for my wife and I that that is one of the ETFs that is on the reserve list so we are not currently aiming to invest into this uh, ETF but it was on our short list to to be in our core satellite strategy but it didn't made it in because uh, we, we just can't save enough uh, money the interesting thing is uh, the to total expense ratio, it's a bit cheaper than uh, the one from the Wisdom Tree. The bad thing is that it's uh, noted in US dollar, so we can't put Swiss francs in and get the uh, US dollars out. So that's that's a real problem for us to, to go into this ETF. And yeah, the dividend is it's always US dollar, so I, I will not mention it uh, in the coming uh, ETFs. There are 100 holdings into this uh, ETF, and there is 821 million invested into this ETF. A fully replicated type, and the past year it's up 15%, the past three years 22.50%, and the past five years 74.47% up. So a little bit less than the one from the Wisdom Tree, but still quite okay. It gives four dividends per year and also in interesting months. So the most of them pay out March, June, September, December. And the previous one was also the interesting months. So January, April and so. And this one is February, May. August and November and the dividend yield it's a, a bit higher than the previous one with 2.13% but yeah the, the previous one has the focus on growth so there you have also the lower paying ones that are can, can grow their their dividends a bit easier so when you go from 0 0.10 paid out every quarter to 0 0.20 you have an increase of 100% and in this case it's yeah 0 0.50 and it goes up to 0 0.55 so you have an increase of 10% and not 100% uh, so the one from Wisdom Tree focuses more on the first kind and uh, this one focuses more on the for me the normal kind of uh, dividend stocks But yeah, it's it's uh, more complicated than what I said before, and I need to make a, a video about what I'm actually saying right now because uh, I think when a lot of you hear what I'm saying, 
you are going to say yeah but that's not correct and I know it's not completely correct what I'm saying but in general when you generalize things most of the time it's not correct but in general that's that's the way it goes with uh, dividend growth they they just look at how the dividend is growing and here it's really about the quality of the income and the payout ratio that matters and stuff so then we have QDIF it's uh, one from iShares and it's also a quality dividend one so not focused on uh, growth but also ESG norms are playing a role for this one the total expense ratio is actually quite expensive 0.35% the currency on the six stock exchange is US dollar once again and there are 91 holdings in this ETF and there is 644 million invested into this ETF a fully replicated type this one as well as most of the other ones and the past year it's up 14% the past three years is up 20 and a half percent almost and then the past five years uh, yeah uh, a bit worse actually a lot worse than uh, than the previous two so 45 percent point 80 percent up and it's only paying out two dividends per year and it's in May and in November and it has a dividend yield of a little bit less than two percent so here yeah an even distribution as well but only two payments in the year which is actually exceptional for our shares that they only give out uh, two dividends per year most of the time i shares gives uh, quarterly e uh, dividends so here special special uh, exception here and then we can go to the ubs one the us dvd and this is focused on the dividend aristocrats so here we really go into the stocks and the companies that are that have a long history of paying out uh, dividends and growing their dividends consistently but of course over the years when you start at 10 cents and you always increase with three or four cents in the beginning it's a high percentage but over the years yeah the three four cents that you add to a dividend of uh, a quarterly dividend of 0 0.60 yeah it's only uh, uh, how, how much is it when, when you add three uh, three cents to 60 cents it's uh, 120 so it's five percent going up a lot of people think it's not a good thing but if you are invested already a long time in such stocks yeah you have actually a yield on cost that is quite high and yeah i'm i'm defending uh, the dividend aristocrats as a as a as a dividend investor which is uh, keen on aristocrats as you know the sdgpx is also one that uh, invests a lot in aristocrats so yeah I'm I'm a bit biased I think but on the other hand I just give the numbers as they are and in the ranking you see it that uh, dividend growth is on top so in that regard I'm honest about that as well so the total expense ratio is 0 0.29 percent it's also noted in US dollar and it's a quite low price of four point zero six one dollars so as you know I like it percentage wise it's it's no difference uh, in dividend yield but for reinvesting your dividend yeah you have a, a lower amount that you can't reinvest so that's that's what I like about uh, low costing ETFs there are 72 holdings into this uh, ETF there is only 1 million invested in this ETF okay it's a young one so as you can see it's uh, not even around for for a year 
but still only 1 million UBS is uh, is not really promoting this ETF I think because normally when UBS starts an ETF there is a lot more money flowing into uh, such an ETF and this one deserves certainly to have more money uh, flowing towards it also the total expense ratio for this kind of ETFs so with quality dividends is not that much higher than all the rest so it's a, a round ballpark what what all the rest is so UBS is uh, really really uh, making an effort here two dividends per year they are paying out and it's in February and in August a dividend yield of 1.22 percent so it's more or less around the percentage that is uh, given by the wisdom tree one but there is an explanation for that because it's an aristocrat so it should be higher but the thing is when it started in June at the end of June there was only one month before it distributed its first dividend and July isn't that high of a dividend paying out month so in that regard this distribution and the dividend yield for the first year because it's not even a year yet but okay you you get what you get what I mean it's not the definite dividend yield that it's going to get uh, when when there is a payout the next payout in August maybe I will return to this uh, ETF and uh, give the final dividend yield for for a complete year but this one is more representative of what we can expect then in uh, August and when you get uh, 0 0.09 and you compare it to this, 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 uh, this uh, amount you get more or less 2.25% so here it's certainly an underestimation then we go to USDV so the spider one again and it's also oriented towards the dividend aristocrats so once again it comes behind the UBS one from uh, the aristocrats so you see a trend going on you go dividend growth quality quality dividend aristocrats dividend aristocrats the total expense ratio is 0 0.35 percent this one is in swiss francs but yeah the fusd uh one fusd one that uh, my wife and i were aiming towards that's of course in the uh, us dollar so that's a pity there are 136 holdings into this ETF there is 3 billion invested 3.2 billion invested into this ETF fully replicated type and the past year only up 3.76% and the past 5 years up only 40% and I say only uh, it's not only it's, uh, it's a nice amount of course but uh, compared to the ones from the S&P and the dividend growth and the FUSD ETF that we saw in this video it's a little bit higher than half of the, the return that we got from those ETFs so four dividends per year in the usual months and the dividend yield is 2.16 percent so the UBS one will be around 2.2 percent as well and yeah look at those distributions quite quite nice and then we have one that isn't noted on the six stock exchange it's the exx5 and that's a special one because it uses more or less the same rules as the schd etf and yeah if you follow the the american stock market a bit you know that the schd ETF was hyped quite a lot the the past years and it lost uh, a little bit of interest in the the last year and a half because it wasn't performing that well but they hope that now with the change in the in the composition because it it changes composition uh, every year 
that uh, they they are going to pick up where they were actually three years ago performance wise because the the last year and a half two years it wasn't performing that well the SCHD and this one from iShares also yeah has the same index that it follows so the US select dividend usage ETF total expense ratio 0 0.31 so in that regard it's much higher than the SCHD one the currency on the Xetra is in euro and the dividend I put it in US dollar and there are 99 holdings in this ETF 323 million invested into it I think because the the rules are quite the same as the SCHD one that a lot of people thought uh, SCHD was performing really well that they put also a lot of money into this ETF but of course the past three years it's not performing that well so the first uh, the past year only up 1.33 percent it's the same for SCHD it's not performing that good as well the past three years only up 7.50 percent and then for five years it's it's uh if you look at the three-year performance compared to the five years so in the two years that went up to the three years it performed quite well but yeah the the last three years are are really uh not to write home about so dividend yield is 2.69 percent and the distributions are also quite evenly distributed uh, across the year and here is the overview of the six ETFs that I discussed today in the in this video so yeah DGRW the growth dividend growth ETF has the best performance across the board so FUSD the one that is the reserve list of my wife and I is not lagging behind that much and it's especially in 2022 that it uh, it missed out on on a lot of the performance but that's uh, yeah that's that's uh, probably feed for for another video that I will never uh, be able to make but that's another thing. I'm really busy at work, so <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's quite hard making videos right now. But I do my best. And yeah, US DVD from UBS. It's a new one, so it's one that we need to follow in the coming years. And especially regarding the dividend yield this number isn't doing justice uh, where it's going to be it's it needs to be around the number from the usdv one because it's a uh, dividend the risk credits one and then of course yeah the one that we here in switzerland can't buy locally the schd clone lagging behind quite hard on all the other ones so yeah with that being said, I thank you for watching this video. Please consider subscribing when you like this kind of content. Also hit that like button, it helps out the channel enormously to distribute the video towards other possible viewers. So thank you for that and see you on the next video on my YouTube channel. Bye!